Howdy folks, John here. In today's DIY R2-D2 build video, we're going to be covering dome printing and assembly. As I mentioned in the introduction video, this is the Mr. Badley 3D printed R2-D2, and I'm using his version 2 cut dome files and instructions. Let's get started. I've just finished my first day of printing two first sections of the dome and this was largely going to dictate if I'm going to keep going on with this project just to see how well it came out and I really am quite impressed. So with that I've got enough confidence to continue. I've started the next two sections of the dome. Been printing pretty much for a week now consistently and got the dome all finished. We've got the upper and lower rings done and I've just started working on the pies and the plates for the dome. Now I've just got this clamp together for now. I haven't started gluing it yet. I'm kind of waiting for the lazy Susan to get here before I start really figuring it out. Plus I had to order some uh, hardware, basically some fasteners. I'm really quite pleased with how well it's fitting. You know, the seam lines are going to be really quite tight. You know, I'm still going to have to use filler to fill it in, but not bad at all. To get all this done, and the two rings. These fit really nice together with the dovetail joints. Just make sure they're on a flat surface when you're gluing them. So I have glued these together. So that's the bottom ring. This is the upper. I haven't sanded it yet. This one I have. So that's where we are after about a week. I'm still looking at what I'm going to use for electronics. Obviously as an RC guy, I am going to be controlling it with an RC controller. And I'll be using uh, one of my RadioMaster tx 16 ss you know, which would give me up to 16 channels if I needed it. Um, I don't think I'm going to need any more than nine though. So a few days have gone by and I'm finishing up the last parts of the dome. At least I hope. Yeah, I realize soon that this project uh, is going to take a while to print. You know, we're in almost coming up on the second two and a half weeks now into this. As you can see, the dome is pretty much all completed. There's just one of the hollow projectors, came out quite well. Went with a finer uh, print layer height on this, 0.1 millimeter. Everything else is here has been printed with either 0.3 for the main dome sections, and I went 0.25 for all the plates. You can see all the bottom plates here have already been sanded. I thought I'd just show how easy this PLA Plus is to sand. We'll do that in just a little bit. The only real problem with this was the radar eye. Now, I don't know if that was just because of the way I printed it uh, horizontally on the print bed with supports, but all the corners curled a little bit. So when it was sitting on the dome, of course, there was gaps at all the corners. So all I did is I took some uh, lightweight body filler, spread it on the back of the radar eye here, and then I wrapped, I took saran wrap, you know, cellophane, and stretched it tight over one of the dome sections. And then I just pressed this really hard against the dome to squish out all the uh, body filler. And what was left retained the shape of the dome. So now it's a really nice fit. This sits roughly about here. It varies, but as you can see, there's no more gaps between the dome and the radar eye. I was going to reprint it thinking maybe I just screwed up one of the settings in the slicer program, but uh, putting that on seems to work fine. Now, if you're fairly new to 3D printing, the reason you have to sand this stuff is one, you have to remove the, all the little layer lines and uh, obviously it will allow the primer to stick a lot better too after it's sanded. And I've heard horror stories about how hard PLA plus is to sand. I haven't really found that. I start with uh, 60 grit sandpaper, and as long as you don't leave it on one spot for too long, it's not going to melt. Just show you an example on this little pie plate. So that pretty much got rid of all the layer lines, and I'll also go around the edges. So you see there's still a few spots here that I missed with the sander. So I, you just keep going just until those disappear. And then on the inside edge, I'll just go maybe a 
you know, a centimeter, half an inch in. You know, just something like that. Switch to 220 grit now and just go over everything again, just as we did before. And that just knocks down all the fuzzies that were left from the 60 grit. Again, go along the uh, edges to clean them up. So there's our pie plate sanded, ready for primer now. And we'll just see how well this fits now in the dome section once you knock all those high edges down off of the uh, plates. There's a plate before sanding. You see it won't quite fit into the recesses. Sitting a little bit proud. And then our sanded plate fits really nice into the recesses, nice and flush with the rest of the dome. So the dome is glued and screwed together now and I just wanted to share a couple little things I learned during this process. First off, I'm using medium thickness CA glue for all the gluing. Medium is nice that it uh, doesn't set up right away, so if you have to readjust something, you've got a little bit of working time, and it's, you know, it's fairly thick, so it will fill in any gaps fairly well. And when I was fitting the panels together, I didn't use the screws right away. I, did, I put in all the screws last, so I fit all the panels together, just making sure they were aligned when I pressed them. Then I used just little folder clips on the back to keep them into position before I moved to the next. And then once I got them all glued together, waited for a while for the glue to set up a little bit, and then I put in the M4 screws and nuts on all the connection sections here. And I did use Loctite on the nuts so they won't back out, or you could use lock nuts. Just don't over tighten them because if you over tighten the screw, what will happen is it will compress the rib on the inside and you'll get a little pucker on the outside, a little gap will open up. So you just want them snug, don't crush them down really hard. And then fitting the top section of the dome, no big deal there. Uh, the Badley files do have the little uh, 1.75 millimeter locating holes so you can use uh, some filament for alignment. And again, just medium thickness CA. And then when it was all done, any little gaps that remained, I just had a glove on and uh, filled all the little gaps with medium CA, just s squeezed it in. There's still some gaps though that I'm gonna have to fill in with uh, body filler. I use this lightweight stuff, but you can see on the seams here, hopefully the camera's picking this up, on all the seams, there is a slight gap. See here, the radar is nice and tight, but when we go over a seam along each seam, it's indented a little bit. So when I put the body filler on, probably going to have to build the seam up a little bit proud. Little tip with body filler if you've never used it before, obviously wear gloves, use it in a well ventilated area, it's stinky shit. But uh, before it completely sets up, sets up really fast so you want to throw it on pretty quick, I just use one of these little spatula things, you can bend it and mold it to the shape of the dome. Anyway, when this stuff is still kind of setting up, you know, it, it gels pretty quick, but it's still soft enough that you can get a knife in and it's kind of just like putty and it cuts out really nice while it's still soft. If you get any in the, uh, you know, all the little recesses. Yeah, and definitely don't start sanding it until it's completely hard because it, uh, it can also break away from the plastic if you don't let it set up long enough. Sanded down that first initial layer of Bondo. Now I've skimmed a second thin coat on and do a final sanding on it with uh, 220 grit. So here's the second coat of body filler sanded down and it's looking pretty good now. There's no more gap between the radar eye and these seams, which tells me these seams are fairly consistent with the rest of the curvature of the dome. You can also feel it just by rubbing your hand over it. You can feel if there's any high or low spots, but uh, yeah, the old radar eye, there's no more gap. So I think we're pretty much ready for priming now. Let's talk about the uh, Lazy Susan for a moment because there's a couple of gotchas with it. I knew about one and unfortunately I've experienced one I didn't know about. I ordered this uh, 450 millimeter Lazy Susan off of eBay. It was only $32 and really nice uh, Lazy Susan. Smooth, well lubricated. There's no slop or play in any of the bearings. 
So very happy with it for that low cost. But as you'll find out if you look through the Astromech forums, these Lazy Susans can vary slightly in their actual size. This specific one I got isn't exactly 450 millimeters in diameter, it's 448 millimeters or 17 and 5 eighths. If you're curious what the inside ring dimensions are, uh, 388 millimeters or 15 and a quarter inches. Because of that, people have to scale the uh, dome drive gear slightly to properly fit the Lazy Susan. And I thought instead of printing the whole gear to find out if it's going to fit or not, all I did is I lowered the gear sections in my slicer program so it just printed the top and I wouldn't waste much time or filament doing this to see how the unaltered or unscaled gear would fit my specific Susan. And as you can see, it's too small. So if I would have wasted the whole time to print the gear, I would have found out that it didn't work at all. And to figure out my scaling ratio, I just found out how many extra teeth would fit in here and it's exactly three that would fit in between this gap. So I counted all these teeth, there's 123 of them. If we added three teeth to that, uh, that would give us 126. So 126 divided by 123 times 100% is 102.4%. That's my scaling ratio. And when I reprinted the full sections of the drive gear at 102.4%, it worked out absolutely perfect. Nice snug fit for the drive ring gear. No slop or play between it and the inner ring of the Lazy Susan. So I thought, oh, I saved a lot of filament and time doing that. But as it turns out, no, I didn't because the lower ring of the dome section is the wrong size. I didn't realize there was two different uh, lower ring files in the Badly Dome 200 print files. And I just picked the normal one. And as it turns out, this wall thickness is a little bit too thick. There should be a gap all the way between the Susan and that lower dome ring. And it's really snug in here. So it won't allow the, <laughs> the dome to turn. So that's no good. So sure enough, go into the Badly files for the dome section. And yeah, there's a whole nother uh, file for larger Susan, lower dome ring files and you can see that the outside wall on the larger Susan lower ring here is quite a bit thinner than the normal one. So what I'm getting at here is you kind of need your Susan before you start printing any of the files associated with it so you don't print the wrong ones. If I was doing this again I would just recommend printing the, uh, the larger Susan lower ring file right off the bat because even if you did have a sm slightly smaller Susan, all that's gonna happen is you'll have a bigger gap between the outer rim of the Susan and your lower ring. So, lesson learned there. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time, and happy building.